What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon. We're back talking more rugby stuff around the Rugby World Cup 2023. Round two is coming up. We're going through all our preview videos, our team selection reactions, having a run through of the team. So we think some good picks and giving uh, a final score. Now we've already done a couple of previews on the channel. They are up. You can go watch them after this one. Unfortunately, with the way the team announcements are being done this week and how close we are to kick off of the first game, literally like four hours away now. Um, we aren't getting all the teams in, in a nice order and they're all sort of all over the place. Um, so unfortunately, as I did with the Wales video, um, going into this one, we're only going to be able to talk about one team. Um, we've got the South African team. We do not have the Romanian team. Um, as of three o'clock, just gone Ireland have just announced there. So that's positive. But I don't know why they're doing this where they're announcing one team and not the other. I feel like it should be so much more structured, especially with, you know, some people getting involved with the fantasy and wanting to pick their players and what have you. So unfortunately, Unfortunately, um, any Romanian subscribers um, or anyone thinking about picking any Romanian players, um, yeah, unfortunately, we won't be covering the team, which is a real shame. I really think World Rugby needs to be uh, making some different rules about getting team sheets out earlier or, you know, making the teams pick their teams a little bit earlier. Even if they change further down the line, it feels a little bit strange to not have like half the teams announced for this round uh, just a few hours from kickoff of the round starting off. But we'll move on to talk about South Africa going into, uh, into this one because they have put out... Bonkers team. I am loving... Uh, South Africa have come into this World Cup as, like, the kings of just bizarre rugby picks. We had the 7-1 split on the bench in the World Cup warm-ups that people got really mad about. I don't know why. I thought it was very clever. Um, and this one is also bonkers. We've got a, a flanker going to be playing hooker. We've got four scrum halves. It's all, uh, all a lot of fun. Now, South Africa last week, of course, played Scotland, got their big win. It's the pool of death. You know, you're looking at it, you were thinking, who's going to be able to qualify from that pool? It's going to be between Scotland, Ireland, and South Africa. I think a lot of people are agreeing on that with no disrespect to the, uh, you know, the rest of the teams that are in that pool. It's going to be two of those three teams. South Africa taking that win over Scotland, 18 points to three, limiting Scotland to only three points as a, as a bit of an achievement um, and looked very good doing it. So they are in the driving seat to get out and into the uh, the quarterfinals. So they've put out this team now going up against Romania, who last week played Ireland and kind of got a little bit decimated. They did score a try, which was nice to see. And they, they really celebrated that one right on the counter-attack. Something South Africa to keep an eye out for. If you give Romania the opportunity, they will score a try. They did it against Ireland. Ireland are the world number ones currently still. And, you know, Romania scored a try against them. They took the lead in that game. Don't want to give Romania the opportunity. You want to put them under the pressure, as Ireland did towards the end of that game, and uh, potentially come away with a, a big old score on your side. So starting out in the front row, uh, Oxen, Shea, Bongi, Umbanambi, and Vincent Koch will be coming in. Now, I know we have uh, some really passionate um, South African subscribers on the channel. I didn't know... Um, Bongi Umbanambi's full name was Umbongeni. Uh, hopefully I'm getting that pronunciation right. Let me know if that's uh, correct or if that's Will Ruby getting a graphic wrong because genuinely I've seen I've seen Will Ruby get graphics wrong uh, before. But Umbanambi coming in now. Big news for the, uh, the South African team. Malcolm Marks has been ruled out of the rest of the World Cup, which is a devastating blow um, to South Africa because I think Marks is up there for best in the world in terms of that hooker position. Um, he came on and off throughout that game um, against Scotland, but uh, yeah, apparently his knee injury is uh, is a bit more substantial than first thought. So he is now out of the uh, the rest of the World Cup. So I imagine Umbanambi's going in as the first choice hooker now um, for South Africa, but we've got some uh, some some other team selection news to talk a little bit later on as we, uh, as we get further down the list. Um, in terms of the scrummaging last week, though um they got put you know against it against scotland scotland wanted to meet them physicality that first half i would say they were pretty even both teams really going for it and i, I think that maybe caught uh, south africa a little bit off guard i was expecting south africa to dominate all day long i was quite impressed by how scotland did uh, but then it was in the second half those subs started coming on from scotland and it just wasn't the same. The subs coming on for South Africa just dominating after that. They won so many penalties at scrum time, even on Scotland's own put-in. Um, and it really began to go wrong for them. So they'll be looking for a big scrum. I can imagine the forwards wanting to have another another solid performance in this game versus Romania. In the lock department, John Klein goes in alongside of Marvin Ari. Um, Evan Etzebeth also picking up his injury for this one. Not that I think um, he would have played for this one. Snayman's also on the um, on the bench as well. But yeah, I thought they would maybe, you know, change it up a bit in this uh, this lineup position again. Scotland line out was really nowhere. South Africa had a, a lot of fun getting involved with that line out. And uh, having seen Ireland um, against the Romania line out last week, even they had one line out right like in their own 22 and they didn't even 
throw anyone in the air and Ireland just took that. I think that was for the setup for one of Johnny Sexton's tries, right? Um, so I think, again, South Africa in the line out this week will be looking to be pretty um, pretty monstrous. And I imagine, you know, there's some big hype between John Klein and, um, and Marvin Ari as well. In the back row, Marco Van Stanen goes in in the blindside flanker. Quagga Smith goes in at open side and Dwayne Vermeulen taking back over in that number eight shirt who's up for some, uh, some big carries. Now, Quagga Smith, um, I've been really impressed by, I've of course only been learning a little bit about South Africa over the last sort of year and a half probably in my entire rugby knowledge is probably about a year and a half's worth of knowledge um, and I've been really getting to enjoy learning a bit more about these um, these South African players and Quagga Smith is one of those ones for me you feel like in any other team this lad starts every game. He, I don't think I've ever seen him have a bad game for South Africa, um, but it's so competitive in that back row and the versatility he has as a player to come on in the second half and play pretty much any position in that um, in that back row um, sort of lends him to just being sat on the bench for so many games. So I'm really glad he gets to start off in this one. I'm hoping he has a really, really big performance in this game and uh, and does get to show off a little bit because I'm, uh, I, I want to see him start more games rather than be, uh, be on the bench for them. In the halfback partnership then, Kobe, Reinach goes in alongside of Damien Valemsa. Um, so no Libok in this game. Valemsa going back in at 10. We'll look a bit more at those kicking options because I think there's going to be a bit more to uh, discuss about that. But Kobus Reinach, you know, an awesome um, scrum half. Very, very fast. It's one thing that the South Africa do have actually is pacey scrum halves. Um, they are all really, really fast and they're going to use them in this game in some slightly different ways. But looking forward to see Reinach um, getting to start off in this one. In the set of partnership, Andre Esterhazen goes in alongside of Kanan Moody, um, who we got to see play center for like the first time for me during those uh, those world cup warm-ups and he was awesome in fact was it against wales no it wasn't against wales i think it was against new zealand we got to see him play play center for that first time uh but he played very well against wales on the wing as well so um he's going to be playing the uh, the outside center today the center department for me was always maybe a little bit of an area that south africa might worry about because they lost lacania am and they were trying to see some other people jesse creel's playing well damien dialende kane and moody being able to brought in now to this 13 shirt i think just brings back that extra bit of depth that they just need as they go on throughout the rest of this tournament and then in the back three. Makazoli Mapimpi goes back onto the left wing. Feels like we haven't seen him for a good chunk of time now. Grant Williams goes in on the right wing and Vili LaRue in uh, in that fullback shirt. So second scrum half of the week uh, over on the right wing. Now Grant Williams, um, I haven't got to see a lot from the, the first game. I was going to see him in that Springbok jersey. He got knocked out um, in, in Malia's charge down tackle. Um, so I haven't got to see a lot from him, but I've understood from catching highlights and from you guys dropping down in the comment section, you've said, you know, watch out for this guy's burst to speed, what he can bring. So being put on on the wing feels like kind of a natural position right he's got an immense amount of speed on him we saw what the island team were doing when you get that ball out wider around romania um they were making inroads bundy aki was just having great fun out on that wing not giving it to james Lowe because i made him my captain and somehow that's how rugby knows <laughs> they know who i pick in the fantasy as my captains they don't give him the ball uh, but yeah they were making inroads in that uh, out on that wing so i imagine grant williams will be looking forward to this one um overall across the board then this is still a solid um south african team they're one of the tier one teams that have come into this with some real good depth right you know look at how many changes have been made from that team that went up against Scotland last week compared to this week and this is still a really really good South African team so looking forward to see how they get on in this one in terms of the replacements then Dion Forey goes in alongside of Stephen Kitchoff and Trevor Niakane uh, coming in now Dion Forey is a flanker stroke hooker what a wild um, setup. This is a, a new one for me. Um, I did catch an interview that he did yesterday. I think it was yesterday uh, where he was talking about in training. He has been training in the hooker position as well just to make sure he could cover it. I believe he actually did play it at club level when they had their own set of, uh, of hooker injuries. So he is actually a bit experienced in the area. I think this is his first time he's going to be playing hooker for... Um, South Africa in that second half. If it's not, and there is another game, feel free to drop that one down in the comments. That's the best I can do from, from seeing interviews and stuff talking about him. So I'm looking forward to see how he gets on because uh, people moving into hook is kind of a very difficult position. We kind of saw it with Kean Healy uh, from Ireland in one game where he had to move into uh, into playing hooker and he actually did pretty well in it. Um, so I'm looking forward to see how he gets on in this one. Rest of the replacement forwards, RG Snayman uh, going in alongside of Jasper Visa. Um, so going for the 5-3, they, they've thought maybe not the power game in this one, going for that 6-2 and just driving um, Romania over. They're using this game to test a lot more things out, um, I think, as we move on to the rest of the placement backs. Jaden Hendricks are going in alongside of Faf de Klerk and Jesse Creel as your uh, replacement centre there. 
coming on. So um, I imagine Jesse Creel is coming on for Kane and Moody because I think you want to keep Kane and Moody safe for the rest of the games. Andre Esterhazen, I think, is more than capable of doing that full 80 and just smashing his way through all day long. But that outside centre channel is probably one area you want to look at. Jesse Creel can also go on the wing if you need him to, um, but I imagine he'll come on for Kane and Moody. But the mix-up in the scrum halves is, is, is a really interesting talking point for this one. So they've got Kobus Reinach, Grant Williams... Jaden Hendrickse and Fafta Klerk all playing in one team, all four scrum halves. When they did the squad announcement going into the World Cup, I thought it was mad. It's like, what on earth are these guys playing at? They're chucking out four scrum halves for this one. Um, they're chucking all of them in for this game. Um, so I imagine what they're testing with, maybe Libox kicking not living up to the, the standard that a lot of people were hoping it was going to. I imagine what they're planning on doing is, like, Jaden Hendrickse or Fafta Klerk will have to go on and play fly half maybe once the game's already done i really feel like south africa are going to dominate this one so i can imagine south africa getting 30 40 points clear on the board then you bring them on and you say let's let's see how you guys are going to fill in at um, at that 9 10 maybe it's a way to give lots of different people kicking options um so maybe damien valencia will get a few kicks to start out with maybe they'll move on test after clerk maybe they'll allow cobus reinach maybe they're just going to test who else is available in this game um going up against romania so that as they get towards the quarterfinals if libok begins to miss it won't matter as much because he'll have numerous options to do kicking for. That's what I'm thinking it's it's all about. Um, if anyone has any better ideas, drop them down in the comments because four scrum halves is a is a brand new one to me. I feel like I'm playing a bit of a, a guessing game in this one. Um, so that is the South African team. It's a, it's a big old team. As we've sort of seen with these tier one teams this week, um, they're putting out, you know, really good starting teams. But the bench, the bench yet again, another team where the bench feels big. And I feel like... You're putting on these lads later on. You know, I can imagine, you know, Yade and Hendricks will want to get involved with this game later on. Jesse Creel coming on is a big boost for them as well. Snayman coming on. I feel like I would probably have Snayman start over. Uh, you know, your you, you starting locks anyway. So coming on in that second half is also an increase. Jasper Visa is a big ball carrier to come on in that second half. I really think a lot of these tier one teams are actually going to get better as the games progress um, over the course of this week. So in terms of a score prediction, unfortunately, of course, we can't talk about the Romania team. I was enjoying watching a couple of the um, the Romanian lads. You know, it was the um, Rapanu, the, the scrum half, who got the try last week. Um, Val Vasa was playing well for them. Simeone Escu um, as well in that fullback position. A lot of the forwards began to struggle. There was quite a few missed tackles from um, from Romania last week, but the uh, the backs were impressing me. They've also got um, Tavita Manamua on that left wing, um, who is a, a giant winger, and I don't think they've utilised him enough in that in that first game. I didn't really see him with the ball in hand at all, uh, but he looks like a, an absolute monster unit. So um, I'm really hoping Romania get to have their hands on the ball a bit more in this game. We get to see some more play from them, and they get to incorporate some of those wingers and some of those bigger lads and, uh, and do make an impression on this one. But I have to say for me, I am leaning towards um, South Africa for this game. Will they get out to the heights of where Ireland got? You've got to remember that the Ireland team that played Romania was pretty much the starting Ireland team. It's about as big as it got. Um, and they went on to win that game 82 to 8 I think it was by the end of it um, so this one is a bit more of an experimental South African team and while I still think the score will be big I'm not sure it'll quite get out to that you know that mid 70s in terms of how much they win by um, I'm going to say South Africa to win and I'm going to I'm going to drop it down a little bit more I'm going to say South Africa to win this one by I'm going to say 60 for this one uh but that's gonna be my prediction guys make sure you do drop yours down in the comment section make sure you're getting your predictions up on super brew unfortunately with the team announcements the fantasy is going to be tough it might even end up being a bit of guesswork i'm not going to lie guys i'm going to try and get as many of these videos out as i can for uh, for you guys wanting to be involved with the the fantasy just to know all the players are uh, you know available and what have you uh, but we'll see how we get on with uh, how weird the staggered team announcements have been i hope you've all enjoyed this one today guys i'll see you all next time bye bye